Good afternoon, everybody. This is the Bob Unger Show, and I am very privileged, and so are you, to have a very knowledgeable and interesting guest who just by that description is not qualified to be in public office. And uh, he is an expert on a subject that I have devoted my life to, namely the miseducation of America. And he has written a sequel book. The first book was called The Dumbest Generation. And that was written in 08? That's right. Okay. And then he's written a new book, which is a follow-up or a sequel, called The Dumbest Generation Grows Up from Stupefied to Dangerous. Is that correct? That, that, from stupefied youth to dangerous adults. And, and so that, that's, that's where we are. Yeah, the full title of the first book was The Dumbest Generation, How the Digital Age Stupefies Young Americans and Jeopardizes Our Future, or Don't Trust Anyone Under 30. And <laughs> that, was in, uh, that was in 08. And now we've got a follow-up. The Dumbest Generation Grows Up. So we're, we're 14 years beyond where we were. So I'm talking about teenagers in the first book, for the most part, and now there are 30 year olds in, in this book. I got you. And I'm gonna ask you a question I always ask every guest. Were you always on the plane intellectually and philosophically that you are now? Or did you have some type of epiphany which kind of triggered a change and a development in your thought process? Well, I used to be a, an academic, liberal, leftist, sort of cookie cutter humanities professor uh, who would, you know, always vote Democrat, would never even consider voting for some of those knuckle dragger Republicans because they're just greedy or stupid. Uh, I, I thought conservative was a bad word. But over the course of the 90s and into the aughts, I, I went to the right. And that included a change in my sense of the young and of the education of the young. I became more conservative about it. I became more worried about our general culture and youth culture. The kind of movies and music and consumerism advertisements that we were pouring into the eyes and ears of teenagers. And then with the digital age, that cultural tidal wave was ramped up to 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all the way into their bedrooms. That is really what prompted the first, the first book. And the thesis there was that the digital tools are hampering the emotional and intellectual development of the young. And my liberal colleagues, the teachers, the mentors weren't doing anything about it. They were just letting it happen because they didn't want to come off as grumps and grouches and get off my lawn types. They didn't want to seem like reactionaries or, or conservatives. They wanted to walk into their classrooms at age 50, you know, sporting an earring and a ponytail. And that I felt was an abdication of their duties to the young to help them grow up, you know, to put a little adult time. And that means learning a little bit about politics and history, some good literature, some good movies and music, some good conversation that they would get on TV and on, and on radio. And they simply stepped back and said, you're the digital natives. You guys are great. You're going to lead America into the 21st century. You've got all the great social attitudes. You're so tolerant and open-minded and progressive, you millennials. You, you helped put Barack Obama into office in 2008. The youth vote went two to one for, for Obama. So we're going to let you go. And we're going to get out of the way while you take ownership of your education and, and grow up and blow us away when you become 30 years old. Well, now they are 30 years old and, and uh, we, we can look and see how, how all that has turned out. 
Yes, sir. We see it very clearly, but they're all, what's amazing about it is the arrogance of their ignorance. They, are, they, they know everything. And when you ask them to back up anything they say with some type of evidentiary basis, they give you a bunch of nonsense and feelings and emotion. Bob, they're, they're, they have fragile egos. And the thing about fragility in the ego is that it sounds like a weakness, but it can also be a strength if you add aggression to that fragility. And that's where we get the cry bullying phenomenon, where by your tears, your declaration of victim status is actually an aggressive action against someone else. And that the, the millennials did not get the equipment to handle differences. They didn't have the tools to admit we live in a pluralist society. When Donald Trump was elected in November 2016. I don't know if you can hear me, but you're, you're freezing. The um, picture is freezing. Mark, Bob, I, I you know, I, I, we've had a lot of internet outages here because of the snowstorm. I'm, I'm hoping that we can just splice together the pieces. Yeah, the uh, what what started to happen, you couldn't maybe hear it, but all of a sudden, you started to break up and break up and started it started to like get very slow your speech. Okay, okay, it just cut out. So uh, let's see, how do we resume? Should, should I, you know, should I start over with talking about the, the, first, the first book? Okay, yeah, we could do that. Because okay. there are ways to, uh, to edit it. 
you know, Zoom yeah. has a... Okay, sorry about that. I, I'm not sure why, why my, yeah. Yeah, you, you sound... You, yeah, my son has been closed, his school has been closed because the internet is all out and, and, and everything. But anyway, um, okay. All okay, right, so, I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it on again.